Welcome back. You are looking live at uh, Lee Pitts Live. And of course, I'm Lee Pitts. Where am I? I'm at the Florida Gulf Coast University, Dunk City, mm. in the heart of the, uh, the one of the great uh, educational institutions here in Southwest Florida. And uh, we're in the Cohen Building. And why are we here? Because we make our annual pilgrimage here for the Quality Life Center's Gala. This is the 2022nd version. And the uh, theme is uh, hope. Uh, yes. What's, um, I had it written down. Um, power of hope. And certainly we're seeing the power of hope inside the building. As you know, I've been out here on the red carpet covering a lot of interviews and meeting the people. Tamara Joy Hunter right here. I'm so blessed to have the opportunity to talk to her. I caught her in the fringes. <laughs> and uh, it's always a great interview to get because what she does and how she impacts the community lines up perfectly well with that building that sits on the corner of Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard and Quality Life Center Way. It's known as the Quality Life Center, affectionately known as the Q. So without further ado, let's talk to this renowned educator Welcome to Lee Pitts Live, Tamara. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here. You seem like you're shrinking now. I'm taller than you. <laughs> Maybe in that chair. <laughs> <laughs> I call you, uh, what, shorty sometimes? Yes, sir. Tamara, how tall are you, by the way? 5'11". 5'11". That's without heels, just flat 5 feet? 5'11". Whoa. Now, were All you, joy. Were you always, like, the tall girl at school? Not for a long time. Once what? I got a little bit older, when I was probably in ninth grade, I was 5'8". And now here I am um, making sure that our children have that representation and they're all excited about being tall because my fifth graders at Franklin Park, okay. they are almost about five, six, five, seven okay. so, at a young age. Right. So I'm teaching them to enjoy who they are, to walk and talk and stand tall. Mm -hmm. And it's been amazing to see it happen. I know we're going to talk about this, but I want to just have some little insight on you now. Because walking down the street or moving around, people may ask you, did you play sports? Were you a model? And all these <laughs> types of things. But did you do any of those? I played sports. I played intramurals. People, mm -hmm. don't, people don't count that. Right. But I also that was modeled volleyball for Mattel. or something like that? Well, I played, we played volleyball, soccer. Mm -hmm. We played everything in intramurals. Okay. But the girls in Virginia are tough. Okay. And they played a little bit like the boys. Right. I wasn't ready. Yeah, you were a girl. So I girly. decided, uh, this is not for me. Okay. But I did do um, modeling with Mattel. I was one of their first black Barbies. My okay, Aunt Nancy, really? my Aunt Nancy I did not Sanders know that. Took us out there and she was like, you're going to do this. And I was shy and I was so bashful, but I did it. Mm -hmm. And if you ever see the picture, you'll see the bashfulness all over my face. Did you ever post those? I did. Okay, you should uh, tag me on them. I will. Oh, yeah. Okay, we might can work it into this interview it and let people ago. see. It was long ago. Okay. Now you mentioned Virginia. Yes. And you you die hard, but what Virginian? Yes. Uh, the seven five seven two up two down all day every day. Went to a historical black college. I did. I went to HBCU, Norfolk State University. Okay. Right there on Corporal Avenue in Norfolk, Virginia. A solid HBCU grad. Of course, I'm an That's HBCU right. grad. Tamara and I are products mm -hmm. of the. Um, um, historical black colleges, which we're right. both proud of, right? That's right. Um, the Quality Life Center, I said early on that what you do fits right into what Quality Life Center does, and it's pretty much um, uh, seeing the um, uh, possibilities in, in our youth and uh, give, trying to do your best, your level best, to make sure that they have the opportunity to realize all their dormant potential. Yes. Expound on it, if you will. Um, my, my brother always tells us to better our best. He's my younger brother, but mm -hmm. he always says better your best. Whatever your best is today, better it. Mm -hmm. Every day you should get better and better at what you do. So at Franklin Park, our mission is to maintain a positive learning culture where everyone performs at a high level and takes pride in that success. So that's how I met my Q family. Um, at Franklin Park, I always attend different events that my students have outside of school. And if they have a difficulty, you. I would stop at the Quality Life Center to make sure they were getting my homework done before they came back to school. <laughs> and I had decided, wow, I was like, I don't want to. those teachers. I know. I did not want to take away. You know they don't away. make them like that anymore. I, listen. <laughs> Remember those teachers, they'd be following means you necessary. out of the school. Yeah. At your house, knock on your door. Mm -hmm. By any means necessary, wow. you will be great. Old school. But I would go to the I would go to um, Quality Life Center, and I kept saying, "There is no way I want to take another child's position at Franklin. I mean, at um, Quality Life Center." So I started going, and I would attend. And then Mr. Muhammad was like, "You will do something here." So I started being the educational li liaison for quite some time, and then life got busy. So I'm in and out, back and forth, and then my son started going to um, Quality Life Center. 
he had all of these amazing black men right there mentoring him. But that's three sons, now, oh, so which one? The baby, the 15 year old. Okay. The other two, they were at Franklin Park, but I thought that it was only for students that needed emotional and physical and social support um, based on what I knew. So once I realized that it's for all of us, it mm -hmm. is for the whole village. And the way they supported my child and coming out of his shyness and being mm -hmm. bold and confident in who he was, it was beautiful. I cut you off, you in mid-sentence talking about black men being on location. Mm -hmm. I want you to make sure that you unpack that. I believe that we need more black men involved in our children's lives for a lifetime. So many people come in and out of our lives. In the black community, we're used to that. People coming in and out, even our fathers, even my father. We're used to people coming in and out, but we need people to come and stay plant the seed and continue to watch it grow and fertilize it, support it, help it balance, all the way through to become that big, strong tree. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, you emphasize the word black men. Is that to say that there's plenty of black women out there in kids' lives, they need to see more role models, uh, African-Americans, things of that nature? I believe that mm -hmm. because our village is strong and our village is powerful, but it takes the whole village to raise a child. And I do an event called A Gentleman's Welcome every, every first day of school mm -hmm. at Franklin Park Elementary School. Um, Unbelievable. You were there mm -hmm. putting on all of those amazing interviews with everyone from the community. Mm -hmm. The whole village was there. Anyone you can think of, is amazing. they were there. Mm -hmm. But we wanted all of those men to come out because um, we have women on our campuses all the time. We have women involved in so many things for our children. Um, at a moment's notice, but when men are there, I think the boys and the women feel so much more profound knowing that the whole community is there to support them, the men uh, and the women. And speaking of Franklin Park, a lot of great things are in the horizon for Franklin Park. It's gonna be uh, demolished and rebuilt. And yes. um, uh, you have uh, alumni, something December 15th, go. Yes, alumni <laughs> night, December 15th. We need everyone to come out. Anyone that has ever gone to Franklin Park Elementary School, if you attended there while I've been there the past 19 years, I have a lot of some of my students coming to support. If you have come to a gentleman's welcome for the past seven years, you are welcome to come and support, have a good time, um, celebrate with us as our mission says, we want to have a positive learning culture. We need all of you here December 15th what's, at Franklin Park Elementary School. What time? What's, what, what's going to happen? Kinda. If you come at 530, everything is going to be all the way live just for the community, everyone that loves Franklin Park. Because absolutely free? It is absolutely free for the most part. Okay. <laughs> Alumni uh, reunion. And that would be kind of yes. the last time everybody gets a chance to kind of... That's the last time. On December 3rd, we have a packing party where we ask the community to come out and help us box up some of those school supplies and all those necessities that we're going to need as we go to portables right across the street from James Stevens Elementary School. Okay. Now, sometimes when I'm doing my show, and I used to come out there and visit the school back when it, well, it probably still is, but I remember you weren't there then when they changed the name to Franklin Park Magnet School. Right. I, I used to go out and speak, and I remember it was a big deal locally when they called mm -hmm. it a magnet school. Now I'm kind of hearing it interchangeably. They call it magnet. Sometimes they call it um, middle. What is it? It's not classified as a magnet school anymore, but we our new school is a STEAM state-of-the-art school. So we will have a science lab. We'll have, I'm sure, we'll bring coding. Mm -hmm. We have um, a two-story building. It's going to do some tributes to some of our students that have passed and family members. It's going to be quite an amazing place. Oh, okay. The, back to the Quality Life Center. Um, tonight you're experiencing the gala. You've been to many of them in the past. Quality Life Center is nothing new to you. You've been to a whole lot of different uh, manifestations of the Quality Life Center. You've seen the ups and downs coming through different turbulent times and it's always uh, comes out great on the other side. Yes. You know, end of year celebrations. I, we, we see each other at all these things. Uh, end of summer. Tonight is magic in there, right? It uh, is. The power of hope. Just kind of paint the picture to our TV audience and our radio audience on what you have, what it has meant to you to be sitting in there enjoying what's going on. To see students of various ages come up and speak professionally well um, and speak 
positively about all the amazing things happening right there at the QLC has benefited so many people and they're getting the word out, sorry. <laughs> yeah, about the needs. They're getting the word out about all of the necessities that our students need. And just getting the word out is getting the village to come in and support them in their needs so that they can carry on this legacy of empowerment for our youth and our community. Mm -hmm. People who contribute to the Quality Life Center are making an investment. Right. We hear Ms. Keisha, Muhammad, everybody mm -hmm. talk about that. What do you, what, what is your thoughts on the, the contribution that the Quality Life Center makes to the community? I think the way they pour into our children is going to be the way they pour in to the children of our future, which is going to change the dynamics of our community. Is there any type of partnership or relationship that Franklin Park Ellen Miller School has with Quality Life Center? I know a lot of your students go to QLC for after school programs. Mm -hmm. and and vice versa like that? Yes, at Franklin Park Elementary School, we have, I think maybe about 20 students that the Quality Life Center, they come on our campus, they get their students and they take them there to continue with drama and they play um, uh -huh. mindful board games. They have karate, they have all types of instrumental practices and they're being poured into by all types of people. Mm -hmm. So it's been quite amazing. What do you hope that people who came out tonight, we hear the applause going on there, what do you hope they take from tonight's experience? I hope that they take in all of the great things that are happening right here in our community and then give back so that those children can give back to the people that we need to be serviced the most. One of America's great educators, Tamara Joy Hunter, Remember that name, she'll probably be in Congress or the Secretary of Education one day. Just an amazing person, great contributor to the community. Always good to have a person of your rank and snuff <laughs> to stop by and talk to us. Well, thank you for juicing my head up. Okay, <laughs> HBCU graduate. Remember, Miami may have the oranges, but the Quality Life Center has got the- Juice. It's got the juice. <laughs> we'll be right back.